100 kilowatt hour battery weighs around 625 kg having 360 megajoules of energy in it which means about 0.567 megajoule per kg the most energy dense non radioactive fuel hydrogen has an energy density of 120 megajoules per kg this is way better than that of batteries this means just 3 kg of hydrogen has equal energy to that of 625 kg 100 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery in battery 10% top and 10% bottom of the capacity are just locked for longer life so the usable from 100 kilowatt hour battery would just be around 80 kilowatt hours which means 288 megajoules on the other hand almost all of the hydrogen from the tank is sent to fuel cell for generation of electricity in an electric vehicle next is usable electric power after efficiency loss here batteries have a major advantage 90% of battery's power goes to the powertrain and just 10% is lost in discharge losses mostly in heat on the other hand converting hydrogen to electricity in fuel cell is not that efficient it is just 62% efficient so after losses in battery will get almost 260 megajoules of energy going to the powertrain from its 288 megajoules while in hydrogen we will just get 223 megajoules from its 360 megajoule after conversion now you might say the battery is efficient at delivering energy also hydrogen fuel cells waste so much energy in conversion then why think of hydrogen as an alternative well here's why let's say you built an electric car that weighs around 800 kg now you have to power its electric powertrain you have a choice of a 100 kilowatt hour 625 kg battery or a 3 kg hydrogen as a power storage system so what makes a better deal well a battery will add 625 kg plus the cooling system and bms so all in all it would be 650 kg on another hand hydrogen will add 3 kg of hydrogen weight plus about 52 kg of hydrogen tanks for this hydrogen to store and fuel cell to convert hydrogen to electricity the fuel cell weight can greatly vary because the fuel cell capacity is chosen according to the electrical power requirement of the motors and has nothing to do with the tank capacity of hydrogen. Toyota Mirai is a hydrogen car having a good power and it uses about 38 kg of fuel cell. So let's consider the same for our example. So now in our example cars, the battery system will weigh around 650 kg while the hydrogen system will just weigh out to 93 kg. Let's round off to 100 kg as there may be a requirement of small battery for regenerative and instant boost. Even then, if you put a battery system in your car, you will ultimately increase the weight and that will reduce the range as the powertrain now has to carry more weight with it. The increased weight also means poor performance cause of bad power to weight ratio, which if you try to correct with higher powered motors will ruin the range further. So the energy you saved by efficient system is just wasted out in carrying its own weight. That's why batteries electric powertrains even being extremely efficient aren't good enough for aviation and space industry. Cause batteries more efficiency doesn't make up for its high weight. While 30% efficient engines on liquid fuels still makes more sense. In our car, if we decide to double the battery capacity, then the weight of the car will be way too much and most of it would be of the battery and that won't add much range and won't double it at all. Cause to carry the more weight of the vehicle and still having a good performance, you need hungry motors that consume a lot of power and that just doesn't remain very practical. Even after this point, if you decide to increase the battery capacity to increase the range, then there will be a point after which adding batteries won't increase the range at all, rather will decrease it. Whereas in case of a fuel cell setup, like the ones we have here will be lot lighter and will give better performance balance. This advantage of weight gets even more lucrative as the range requirement increases. Like doubling the hydrogen capacity will add 55 kg to the vehicle weight that is 3 kg from hydrogen and 52 kg of the tank weight. This still doesn't add much to the overall weight of the vehicle thanks to better energy density of hydrogen. Cause honestly, Hydrogen tanks even being heavy are not that badly heavy as much as Elon rolls it. And it still makes more sense cause the overall setup still remains lighter. But overall volumetric space requirement even for light setup is big. 
so it's difficult to squeeze more hydrogen on a sedan considering the tank size. But big vehicles have ample of space availability. That's why companies like Volvo and Hyundai are working intensively on hydrogen powered trucks cause they weigh lighter than electric trucks and also have a good load carrying capacity, good range, good power with less refueling time. Now there's an obvious question. Why hydrogen vehicles are not that common if they are so promising? Well, there are a few challenges with current hydrogen technology. First, the smaller problem. The fuel cell itself is quite expensive cause it uses rare earth metals like platinum and the scale of production as of now is very less so they are expensive as the production scale will increase the costs will drop. The material required for each fuel cell also can be utilized in a more effective way to reduce the overall requirement of raw material while new materials are still being researched. The bigger challenge is with the hydrogen's availability. Now making hydrogen is quite simple, you just have to put electricity into water to get hydrogen out of it. The problem is infrastructure where it can be available easily. We had electricity for centuries, still building an EV charging infrastructure is a big task even today. Hydrogen refueling stations to get to that scale will obviously take time. And unless we get a good reliant hydrogen refueling infrastructure, the adoption of hydrogen cars is difficult. However, hydrogen has more things in its favor for the future. First of all, hydrogen is one of the most abundant element in the universe and we have a lot of water in our oceans. So with electricity from green resources, we can create hydrogen with, with electrolysis pretty easily. According to the CEO of HTEC Systems, setting up hydrogen transportation is also more economical than that of setting up electrical grid. Also the loss in electrical grid is more than that of hydrogen loss while transporting and the loss in hydrogen pipeline system is only when there is leak. So for longer transmission distances, hydrogen transport with pipelines has absolute upper edge. As of now hydrogen is transported by roads, on trucks, hence it is very expensive. The good thing about hydrogen infrastructure is it doesn't need to be a multi-server and dense as we require for electric vehicles. Refilling the hydrogen tank hardly takes 5 minutes, whereas BEV takes about an hour to recharge completely. Also without adding much weight, you can guess twice the range on an hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicle, thanks to the good energy density of hydrogen. More range means fewer refueling stops. So let's say 10 battery electric vehicles want to go 1000 km and has a range of just 500 km. Then on a charging station, all 10 will be parked occupying the space for an hour, then we'll go 500 kilometers and then we'll again stop for one hour more to recharge, occupying space again. Whereas 10 hydrogen fuel cell EVs can be refueled in just 5 minutes. So 10 cars even on one pump will take 50 minutes one after the other to get refueled and will go 1000 kilometers without stopping thanks to the better range. So the infrastructure doesn't need to be a big one and a dense one as we need for battery electric vehicles. If you also observe the government policies across the world, there is lot of focus on hydrogen fuel cell cause it has a huge impact on environment, making green dream true and making everything more economic. Here's how. As we talk about green energy, the main problem is when you generate excess electricity with renewable energy, especially during daytime with the solar power. It needs to be stored well to be used at night or any time when it is required. Storing it in batteries or in other forms like heat or compressed air is just not very economical and scalable. Whereas converting the electricity on the spot directly into hydrogen by electrolysis is extremely economical, extremely feasible and lot more storable and scalable than electricity storage. Also store hydrogen doesn't have a storage loss over time as there is with the batteries. Also it being energy dense, it requires less space for storage. Although electrolysis is just 70% efficient, still considering the energy loss over time in storage methods and energy loss in transportation over long distances, hydrogen storage and transportation makes more sense. So all in all, as much time as we give for EVs to come to this stage, 
hydrogen also needs some time. But it has more promising future, especially in heavy good carrying industry than our beloved BEVs. And an hydrogen fuel cell EVs will have a more revolutionary impact on the vehicle industry than what we expect from battery electric vehicles. This may sound a bit controversial to the Tesla fans, so make sure you leave your opinions in the comment section below. As of for now, I'm signing off and see you guys in the next one.